All right. Sorry, guys. Testing one, two, three. Okay. Sorry, guys. Sorry for the feedback. I have microphone issues. Uh, sorry about that. Anyway, um, let's jump right into it. I am Ryan Dosira, uh, co-founder of Precision Trading Labs in New York City, and I'm coming to you today with the weekly recap of the market and some forward-looking uh, to see some potential scenarios in the market. But uh, before we begin, if I could throw the disclaimer up here, um, take a look at that, watch it for your protection and ours, um, why that's up there. If you do like this video, you would throw in a like button tells the algorithm you'll like us and uh, if you would subscribe to our channel for more content just like this one yep. we put out a weekly video we have a uh regular uh if you join our email list we have regular information going out also so i'm going to jump right in and um do some market analysis for you guys so give me one second while i bring up toss um start with spy we'll come back to apple okay Just clean some of my charts up. Sorry, guys. Yeah, it doesn't matter that I use Toss, by the way. If you guys use TradingView or TradeStation, it doesn't make a difference. All right, so here's the SPY. Let me just show you where we are now. We are here now. I mean, you know, we've had a fairly nice move down here the last couple of weeks. Um, you know, we got a hot inflation report. We got the GDP number, which caused the gap down on Thursday right here. Um, you know, but it kind of stabilized and recovered. You know, um, we had the GDP report and then it also did not like Meta's earnings. So obviously they got their butts kicked in that because of, you know, a lot of reasons. But, um, you know, we're sitting, we looks like we reacted to this as like a support area. Not so much demand, you know, close that gap. You know, after a gap reverses, usually the market does like to does like to reverse. Let me just change the color here so it doesn't get in the way of our official yellow box. So we're sitting up here. Um, I am expecting maybe if I drop the time frame down, I can find something in here with a potential reversal point. Maybe not. We'll see. So that's a 240. I'm not going to mess around with the two hour. Uh, OK, nothing there on the two hour. Excuse me, four hour. Uh, I think you can see something on the 30. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Okay. Okay, folks, do you see, we are sitting right here, right? So we'll see where the market opens tomorrow, but right in this vicinity here, would expect. Right. So we have that sideways action, that big, big move down. Um, we're sitting just below it. So here, let me throw some lines on just just for because I'm a great guy. So we got to see where the market opens first uh, tomorrow. Uh, we you know if we get a gap above it, no trade. If you get a gap into it, that's a little different. That's a nice trade. Um, you will see here there is that gap below that we got uh, from the Friday's opening gap. You know, I'm not saying you should get long at the close of that gap, but the market usually does like to reverse there. So if it closes, I wouldn't expect a short term, you know, gap fill reversal. And then um, you know, nothing really too pretty here. Uh, it looks like it reacted to this already. This is a busted demand zone. So not a whole lot to say. If this works, I mean, this is a shorter time frame than I like using for longer term trades, but. If it does work, I wouldn't be shocked if we get a fairly, um, you know, sizable move down. You know, maybe we test those lows right around 494. We'll see. Okay, let's do the cues, and then we'll head to a couple other instruments. All right, so like I, we have a, a Zoom call every uh, couple times a week, and we had our last one was on Thursday evening. Uh, with my community, and we had found this little area here on Tesla, on uh, the Qs, excuse me, sorry. We found one on Tesla also, but this on the Qs. And um, it's interesting because that drop base drop there, price came in, and, um, you know, I didn't think price was going to get there on Friday. I was hoping it was kind of wait till next week because I don't like when the market closes inside the zone like that. 
you know, Mitch and I are always talking about, you know, first thing that, that has to happen when you have a trade, that has to stop price, then it has to reverse price. So right now I wouldn't be shocked if the market gaps up a little bit, but ideally if it can come down, close this gap here. Um, so, you know, I holding this over the weekend, I you know didn't recommend to anybody. There is another area up here that I'm waiting for. Um, you know, if we do get up there, that's a pretty nice move down there. On the long side, let's see. Yeah, all the way down there on the daily. So that's the next really nice demand zone, really nice origin of this big move here. So we got a while there. That's down at, you know, 406, uh, 407, it looks like. So I'm not going to put that on the chart. I thought I had something on the lower time frames here. I might be thinking of that Tesla chart. I guess so. Yep. All right, so let's uh let's move down to uh let's look at GLD. Gold has been super interesting. The futures have been really great to trade lately on gold. Um, you know, it is what it is. Uh I did identify this last week. We've had a nice run up since February, obviously, with a high at 225. Um, we're sitting just above this demand zone here. Um I have some concern. You just actually should get the blue box because I don't love it. It's got a good move out and exit, but I, structurally, I'm not a big fan of these just kind of sitting out there like that. And, you know, it's in the middle of this swing up. And so we learned from a mentor that, you know, don't diddle in the middle. It's a fun little, uh, fun little phrase you would use. <laughs> and uh, so I'm not a big fan of this. It, it, you know, could work. Absolutely. It's just, you know, I'm not rushing to take it. Let's call it that. Um, Maybe we'll only hit Tesla and Apple today instead of going through Meta and all this other stuff because I think Meta's charts all effed up from the uh, earnings. Um, let me pop this up here. Oh, I must be dyslexic. Okay. All right. Yeah, I thought we were. Okay, so on the daily chart, you know, not much of, you know, We've come off the highs of 300 and tested 138. So let me show you the trade we discussed in my community the other day. And it's that's the origin right there. That's the demands, uh, excuse me, supply zone. And it's sideways action, big move down. Price comes in, eventually drops. Yeah, the, the one thing we talked about on Thursday was uh, waiting for confirmation on the Friday morning open because I just wanted to see where it was going to open. Um, so you had time to react, kind of smacked really down and then just, you know, slight recovery. I still expect that there's just air and we'll wind up down at 164 here, which is a very nice risk to reward here. I'm, I'm liking this. It's about three to one. And then you have a chance here for a little demand zone here to go long. Not too, yeah, I mean, I like it. I mean, you got a tested supply, good demand, and a nice trade come out of that. So um, that's for me. And uh, before I get to Apple, guys, just want to remind you that there is some links in the description. Um, besides liking and subscribing our info, there is a calendar link there where you can book a call with me. Um, I will happy to take you through our process for trading stocks, options, and futures. But uh, I'm only going to keep this video to, to stock-related stuff. If you want to, obviously, if you don't want to short Tesla, you can always you know, buy puts and stuff. I can walk you through that. I've been trading options for quite a while now. So, um, so do Apple. Sorry, guys, I'll be right back. Hold on one second. All right, so it looks like I identified stuff in Apple. Oh, yes, I know what. Okay, so actually, I got to give Mitch credit for this because he did this one of our training sessions. We were doing a live course, and he had found this little weekly area here on Apple. And I did not set an alert somehow and missed it. And we got a you know nice... I don't say a rip. We got a nice move up. I think you know, definitely easily to make some nice money off of that on the weekly zone. Um, you know, we've reacted positively. Is it going to hold for too much longer? We really got to see tomorrow. I can't really say right now. I need the market to to kind of guide me, and we'll see what Monday uh, tells us. But let me drop to. I don't think there's anything on the daily actually. Oh, they have earnings. I think coming up, don't they? 
Oh, no. Not totally, but... Yeah, okay, they're just waiting for earnings. Okay, not not much is going to happen, hopefully. Um, yeah, I'm just going to stay away from Apple for a few days, it looks like. Yeah, not, nothing really of quality and little crappy demands on there. Yeah, I mean, I think they're just going to wait for earnings. I think we'll have a situation like Meta where it's going to, you know, completely decimate the chart up or down. I don't really know what direction it's going to go in. Uh, but if it gaps up, it'll take out all the noise over here. If it gaps down, it'll take out all that noise. So um, just sit on your hands there with uh, Apple. You know, I mentioned it's what the hell. Let's just do that. I don't, oh, you know what? I do want to leave time to look at Bitcoin real quick. Um, we don't think a ton of stuff about Bitcoin, but since we have a couple of students doing really well with it, um, you know, I have one student named David who's been trading crypto since I first heard of it. You know, he's one of my er, earlier students. So uh, he's been working with us for about 10 years and he's pretty good at trading that. So, um, yeah, we're just kind of in no man's land on the weekly chart. You don't see the gap down, but um, change it to a daily. Oh, this could be interesting. Usually I don't like, okay, we had one earnings gap and then, wow, that's hilarious. That's an earnings gap there, right? And then we had an earnings gap down to nearly close it. Not quite there yet, but it doesn't have to close 100%. But um, right now we're just kind of sitting on air. Uh, yeah, nothing here on, on on Meta. Sorry, guys. Yeah, I wish there was something good to, to write about. Nice run up with the bull market. And now it's kind of giving it up a little bit. We'll see. We'll see. Little bear week. Oh, next week, I believe, is the Fed. We should take a look at that before we get to Bitcoin, too. All right, let's look at Bitcoin real quick, and then we'll we'll check and see what time the Fed is. All right, so this, I already have the chart up. I'm not going to talk too much about it, but it looks like Bitcoin came off the highs. I think people, one, someone I somewhat respect when it goes to crypto was saying 80,000 never got there um you know now we've just been sideways in the 60 you know if you look at this and i draw let's just draw a rectangle you see it's been mostly in a range it hasn't broken out of this range that's interesting i don't know what bitcoin's waiting for right so like either breaking that high or breaking that low but if it breaks that low down at the lower end of the of uh the rectangle sitting just below there this is a four hour chart by the way there's a very nice demand zone from a couple weeks a couple months ago uh, sitting right there on the four hour. So we're sitting up here. You know, if we get a move down there, I like that zone a lot. Um, you know, if you trade Bitcoin. And then uh, the other thing I wanted to do, guys, is let me just grab this. Let's just look. I think the Fed announcement is this week. So it's just, I could be wrong. So, so here's Monday. May one final I manufacturing PMI that's going to move markets, ISM. Okay, these the, these are big. These are big. And then yes, two o'clock Wednesday, May first. I think we will probably have to check my schedule. If we can do the live Fed announcement trading session that we've done a couple of times, usually that gets a lot of good reviews. That you know they're the fun rate. Um, Mitch is usually really good at getting the timing really good. So the number gets released at two and then Powell talks at two 30 and that's a little bit more of a market mover. So, um, be aware of this guys. I'm going to be flat going into it. I'll trade the reaction now and then. Um, but we'll see if I, uh, if you're, if you get on our email list, there'll be a link in the description to get a free report. I published for, uh, three steps uh, three-step trading process. Um, if you request it, you'll get on the email list and I will invite you to a Wednesday trading session if we live trade the um, Fed announcement. So I hope you guys can show up and I hope you like this video. Um, with that, if you guys have any requests, put it in the comments, some symbols you'd like to review that you know pretty regular. I review these because we're kind of always monitoring them. They're all big stocks and you know my community wants to know about them. So it's why I focus on these, but I'm um, happy to take... Uh, 
happy to take some requests so throw a comment in there and if you would go ahead give us a like so the algorithm knows uh you like us and someone out there was listening that would be great and i will talk to you guys soon enjoy the rest of the weekend and uh ryan is out